thing, and you're you're collapsing. Every human being knows the attribute is not. Everyone knows this. No, they don't. You're saying that your you're saying your schools don't debate this. You don't even know what my schools believe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Maybe I don't know anything. Maybe I don't know anything. That's a fallacy. That doesn't prove your position. Okay. Sure. So you're a fallacy machine. An attribute is something that does not exist in abstract, it exists within something, and that something remains one. Nobody says that having attributes makes you more than one. I have love, compassion, hate, fear, all of that. No one says, therefore, I'm 100 or 200 because I have different attributes. That's like ridiculous. Yeah, so uh, just to put it simply, like to say, black cannot exist within itself, has to exist in a shirt or, or an object. Attributes do not exist in vacuum. Okay, uh, Jay, we'll give you three minutes to respond. Yeah, it was foolishness. Okay, so you want to continue it was to foolishness time, because, because no, this is my time, dude. Shut up. The this well, foolishness because he admitted that the analogy that he gave to parts of a shirt, like attributes, like color, the color black, those are parts. And by the way, I didn't argue that you thought all I had parts. I know that you don't think he does. My argument is that you contradict when you say that he has attributes that are dependent. Do you believe that the attributes are self-existent, or they do they depend upon Allah's essence and amongst themselves in a dependence relationship? That's okay, a question. Um, Sure. Okay, well then the, the three minutes is uh, well, forfeited. So asked, to the question. No, it's not forfeited. He asked me a question in his opening statement. I can ask him a question. And then we decided to go three minutes back and forth. I mean, if we're going to do questions, then uh, the, the, we can't do the three minutes uninterrupted again. So, okay, I'll let you respond to this. Uh, Muslim answer question. Uh, 30 seconds to respond. Oh, yeah, he mentioned something about uh, uh, the color being a part. I, did, I mentioned many attributes like love and hate and this and that. So that's, that is a straw man. Uh, I said, are they dependent? I, I is it a dependence relationship? Now, to respond to the, the dependence or not dependence, we don't use this terminology. Allah doesn't use it, so I don't, therefore I don't use it. I believe it's an attribute, and an, an attribute exists within the, the, the creator. We don't use the term dependent or independent to the Are they distinct? Simple. And what by the way, you, you do, do, you do use do you that terminology in debates because Jake used that terminology in many of his debates. I'm not Jake. I'm I know, Jake. but, you, but you're saying you, you guys don't use that terminology. He did. I'm talking about the, from an Islamic position. Uh -huh. You're not allowed to talk. So about are they Allah. dependent or not? about himself. Okay, so in other words, you have a double you have a double standard. So no, notice that he has a double standard to where in his position he's allowed do to say, "I don't have to answer these questions. I don't know the relationship of all of these attributes." I didn't say that. I didn't say that. that is what you, you said. You said we don't have to answer that. That's what I you said. Asked you, what do you mean by dependent? I asked you what you mean. Are they all say? Are they all say? You have to clarify. Are they all say? Are they self-existent? Are they self-existent? I'm sorry, you don't know the terms. Are they self-existent? What do you mean by self-existent? Do they exist of themselves? You don't know that word. They exist within the create, as I said to you. They exist so they're dependent. With Allah, they exist with Allah, and there is nothing that exists separate from its attributes. You're making a, are the a, attributes a false distinct. argument here. No, it's not. Trying to it's a classic the debate within your Aqidas. Your Aqidas debate this, and you know that. I don't know what your well, Aqidah is. But you don't know, know what a school is. Your system. Now he's lying. He's playing Aqidah. like he doesn't. This is what they do. They pretend that they don't know these are classic debates that they care over. The relationship of like, like the Mutazila, the Mutakalaimam, the Salafi. You all do this. Does Allah have an uncreated foot? Okay, so you talked about the Mutazila. Who are the Mutazila? What did they believe? The, Give me the four principles of Mutazila. Five principles. Uh, so, of Mutazila. Well, what, no, well, that, the the Neoplatonist. The, 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 the Neoplatonist said that. So here's what he did. The Neoplatonist. So, he's, so he's deflecting names. away because he won't answer these questions. Notice he won't answer their questions. So whether it's the people who believe in the body parts of Allah or whether it's the Neoplatonist Shia, he won't answer. You made an argument. You made an argument. They have the same position as the Neoplatonist Shia do. That's what you said. So present me what the difference. No, I, you don't even. You're know not. No, you I don't have to define problem. your schools for you. You tell me so what. You don't know. So you don't, don't have know it. It doesn't matter the four principles when you can't answer the question. They didn't believe you can't you notice they didn't he won't answer the question of Allah and the attributes because the the he doesn't know what the word self-existent and Allah say means. You're incorrect. What's your position? I don't care about them. What's your position? What's your position? My position is what the Quran and Sunnah teaches. Which is what? So you're obfuscating. You gotta give me a question and then I gotta respond. What is the relationship of Allah to His attributes? Are they are they asay or not? I responded to you. We, no, you we, didn't. Uh, no, you didn't. You're deflecting, and you're you're collapsing. Every human being knows the attribute is not. Everyone knows this. No, they don't. You're saying that you're you're saying your schools don't debate beat. this. Uh, I, this uh, uh, you don't even know what my schools uh, believe. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. What, do, it doesn't matter. Maybe I don't know don't anything. Know Maybe I don't know anything. That's a fallacy. That doesn't prove your position. Okay. Sure. So you're a fallacy machine. All right. So you can't answer this basic question, can you? You don't know the relationship of Allah to His attributes for the fourth time. What I responded to you. What do you mean? But you didn't answer. I told you. You deflected. I told you the attributes of Allah are not something that we say is apart or separated from Allah. We okay. don't believe that. How does we that solve the question? Mean, so are they like are they all say? Just like you cannot separate my love and hate from me. But those are parts uh, of you. Allah. That, that, I thought Allah is nothing like creatures. I thought he's nothing like creatures. I thought he's nothing like creatures. You, you, you said the parts, so it shows that you are saying no, you said the parts. You, said not. you can't understand you that I'm putting that. you into a and pretzel bind. Insulting like a kid, like a child. You're just exposing your ignorance. Attributes are not parts. Human beings. That's your position. You contradicted yourself when you compared it to parts of your shirt, dude. The problem you're doing. Does your shirt have parts? Does your shirt have parts? Polytheism. You know the Now I go back to the Dawah script. Now let me go back to the Dawah script. 
Oh, have, have you, you have 99 lives, gods. Independent existences, independent wells. Oh, so now you, know you know the word I'll say. Now you know what I'll say means. To compare that so this guy's a snake. Look, he knows that. what the word I'll say means. He and pretended you, like he didn't you, know earlier because now he said the Trinity is independent. They're not independent. We don't believe in independent existence. They're not independent. That's not our position. Bowing down and prostrating to him. That's not an attribute. You don't even you don't even know what I already refuted this when I gave you monarchical trinitarianism. All he does. That's monarchical trinitarianism. That's the position I gave you at the outset. Clearly losing it and acting like a child and I think you got no because you're saying you're this totally because you literally didn't answer any of the questions I asked you about the attributes you said parts like shirts shirts have parts dude that's your I analogy didn't say shirts. I said black yeah, I think that's part of your, you don't think shirt black. you know so blackness is not part of your black. shirt uh, show me the existence of black what is that <laughs> what does that have to do what it's a part it was, say it's accidental I don't care it's not it's not an attribute and I, it, I give oh, an so wait a minute. Of, so of, it's of an attribute of a shirt which is made up of parts. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, uh, 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 How can you separate them? How so you use the analogy to a creature when Allah is nothing like creatures. No, I'll give it an analogy so like you so they can understand. We can have attributes and Allah can have But Allah is nothing like creatures, so it doesn't work. His attributes, that, that's not what we mean. No Muslim scholar in Islamic history said that there's nothing like onto it means he doesn't have attributes. <laughs> no, it says that he's nothing like creatures. So so it's a contradiction. That the attributes of Allah are maximally perfect. We can have attributes, but a limited attribute. The Creator can have maximally perfect. I know you believe like that, but I'm, you don't even it's understand like the contradiction it. I'm pointing out. How is there a comparison of Allah to creatures when He's nothing like creatures? You compared Him to your shirt and the what parts you, of your shirt. What do you mean? What do you mean by nothing like? What do you mean by that? Like uh, honestly, it's such a childish thing. What do you mean by there's nothing like Allah? What we mean by you mean when like it says Allah? that in the Quran, the in 42, Allah it says Allah. Allah is nothing like creatures. Okay, and I responded to you. Allah is not. I and you gave an analogy of a created no shirt and its parts. No, no, I didn't do that. Yes, you did. You, you, as I said, you're dead. You just said, said that. Look, he black. says, no, I did not do that. Color, you said, said the black on exist. my shirt is an attribute. I said, colors, I said colors don't exist in abstract. What does that have to color, so black has to exist. Has to exist. It's a cre so is your shirt a created so analogy? Is it a created analogy? The shirt is it a created analogy? The color black is an attribute. Uh huh. Is it an analogy? Created things analogous to Allah. That's the point. We're in a circle now, so no, no, you're just not answering. You're avoiding it. So you're using created things with you're parts that are composite as an analogy to Allah who's nothing like creatures. All right, let's do timing because as you can see, it's just... Uh, uh, because he's running over me. Let's do the timing. Quick, like do the timing because I can't do it. Okay. Yeah, because he talks over other people. Uh, reduce that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, go, we'll resume from Jay's question and then we'll do 30 seconds back and forth each time. I'm going to be specific with the timer. So Jay, can you repeat your question? And then yeah, the question was very explicitly. You made an analogy to Allah and his attributes to a shirt with parts and accidental things like colors when the Quran says twice that Allah is nothing like creatures so your analogy doesn't work and it doesn't tell us anything how do you resolve that 30 seconds okay I never made that he doesn't understand what he's talking about I made an analogy for him about the idea of an attribute the attributes <laughs> now the analogy is to do the attributes not to do with Allah is conflating the two it's not the <laughs> idea is that attributes do not exist in abstract, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. come on yeah he can't do it right the attributes do not exist in abstract they have to exist within something they're not separable they're not parts and that's how we look at the attributes of Allah. Allah is not like anything because his attributes are maximally perfect. They're not like ours. Simple. It's very, very simple. And people listen. So he doesn't even understand the critique. Okay. Do you, you, you want to the question thing? So I, I should give yeah, a question. So now once he, again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but, okay, okay, so now let's, let, let's let Lance respond with the question, but we have to do uninterrupted or else this is a, this is a waste of time. So I'll, I'll let uh, Lance pose a question here. You, you could also respond uh, to what you wanted in the last one, but let's 30 seconds back and forth. Lance, uh, go ahead. All right, so we, uh, he agreed that the Trinity means that the three persons are co-equal, co-eternal. We look at Jesus in Mark 13, 32, who explicitly mentions and says that he does not know the hour while the Father knows the hour. And I can bring a quote from a church father right now who is explaining that this so superiority of the father over the son they're not equal because one of them knows when the hour is going to happen the other doesn't know Jesus is going to say that's human, his human nature it's irrelevant because he had both natures divine and human nature so you cannot come and say that's the human nature so how does Jesus not know something and you claim that he's equal to the father and the Holy Spirit doesn't know as well because the verse says only the father knows Mark 13, 32 okay do you have a question to follow up? I know um, he's supposed to answer right? question answer did you well, what was the question? the question is how it's about Jesus' say, nature yeah so I agree equal I he understands. I, yeah, and uh, no, I don't answer it the way he thought I was going to answer. I answer it according to the way St. Basil does in letter 235 and 6, where he says that the limitation there is a form of rhetoric or exaggeration, which Jesus does in many places, where he says, for example, that there's none good but the Father. Does that mean that no one else is good? No, it's rhetoric, because in other places he also qualifies that and says that the Son also is good. He says that people are good, the Holy Spirit is good, a good man will do this or that. So, no, when he says things like that, we have a consistent uh, exegetical pattern as to how we explain those passages, and we don't believe the Bible contradicts. So there are passages that talk about the subordination which if he understood what monarchical trinitarianism is we recognize a subordination of the son to the father but not according to essence so he doesn't understand that that's different 
that's a different theology than he has. He thinks that distinction entails uh, like differences in terms of ontology. We believe that just as a son can share the same nature as his father, he can be subject to the father. That doesn't, doesn't mean the father has more human nature than a son. That's an analogy. Your position, by the way, doesn't make sense in terms of analogies because you said you made an analogy to help me, but your very analogy doesn't work because Allah's uh, attributes and his existence are nothing like the thing in, things in the created order. So your analogy doesn't work. That was the critique. And you just keep restating it. Your- that was a bit over a minute. I'll answer it if you respond in a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll respond very, very simply. That's how Christians try to run away from the scripture. I just said I can present uh, quotations, I can present commentary. People explicitly say that this is an issue, uh, that, that one knows something while the other doesn't know something. But they'll throw, oh, this is just rhetoric, rhetoric. Like Jesus says, there's no one good but the Father. He means ultimately good. Yes, there's no one perfect in his goodness except the Father. We agree, there's no issues there. So that verse that Jesus says doesn't have an issue. We also agree when he says he doesn't know that he doesn't know. And you cannot be God and you don't know something because God knows everything all the time. So you cannot run away from the subject in something. And you said, by the way, uh, the son is subject to the father. You believe the son is subject to the father. Exactly. So he's subject to the father. Mm-hmm. They're not quite equal in the sense that they are equal in every position, every way, every shape. And that's why we say that the, what you call the father is a true God. What Jesus is someone who's subjected to him. That is Muslim belief. Okay. Uh, JP, you respond in a minute. Yeah, but you're missing the point that at the beginning I said that I wouldn't immediately commit to your understanding of the words co-equal because in some ways they are equal in terms of power and in terms of nature, but that doesn't mean they're equal in every sense. So that's why I was hesitant to agree to your tricks of terminology there with making it simple and making it easy. That's why I use monarchical Trinitarianism, which again, to use the analogy of a father or a king and his son, the king and the son, the prince, possess the same natures. The king is not more human than the son, and yet the son still is subject to the father. This is Orthodox Trinitarianism. I'm not a Roman Catholic, so this is our position, which I stated from the very outset in the first five minutes, but you just didn't know about that. But when you gave your analogy again of the attributes, you didn't answer the question. You avoided it, you ignored it, and you wanted to switch over into the question of Jesus' knowledge, which is fine. I don't have a problem uh, mentioning the fact that Jesus uses rhetoric and exaggerated language all the time. He says, if your hand causes you to sin, uh, cut it off. He's not saying literally cut your hand off. He's also not saying that no one is good but the Father. It's rhetoric. So in the same way, he can express that the the Father is the sole source of all existence, goodness, knowledge, etc. And yet, at the same time, the other passages also confirm in John 5 and 6, that Jesus has all the same powers, knowledge, and uh, uh, activities as the Father. Everything the Father has has been committed to the Son. So you selectively choose the passages. And I want to go back to my question then. How do you know which passages are the correct passages in the Bible and which ones are the corrupted ones when Allah's word cannot be corrupted? And I'm told in uh, 5... Yeah, that, was, that was well over a minute. Uh, okay. I'll give you response to that question. I'll give you 90 seconds. Right, I'm very happy that look he shows he changes his position. He agreed when I said is that the, the Trinity he shaked his head and he said yes. Now he knows that this is going to be problematic, so he admits that they're not equal. I'm happy. That's it. That's what we're all. That's trying not to what. No, you're just, you're just you're just confused on the side. That's not what I said. Interrupting. Don't interrupt. Shut up. So like you said to me, I'll say the same thing to you. They're not e- they're not equal. Uh, with your own statement, you said that they are not equal. Oh, yes, they are not equal. Exactly. That's what we believe as Muslims. The father who you call the father is superior to what you call the son. You give an analogy of king and son. Exactly. The king commands the son is superior to the son. It's not equal to him. So I in nature, you're lying. I said in nature. You're interrupting again. You're interrupting again. Uh, please, 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 please. Thank you. Uh, please don't interrupt. When it comes to rhetoric and, and, and not rhetoric, they run away from anything which is key. For example, I'll bring him now, John 17, 3, where Jesus says explicitly there is no true God. The only true God is the Father. He says the only true God addressing the Father is the only true God. And he doesn't get, which means that any other deity is false. We have all over the Bible uh, Jesus making statements that can be appear divine. I can say it's rhetoric as well. Anyone can say rhetoric. Okay, whatever verse you're going to bring up is also rhetoric. And we play this game, whichever verse you don't like, we just call it rhetoric. So the game with playing uh, with, with these things that don't agree with you is you try to escape the position and the fact that Jesus was subordinate, submissive. So you have people arguing it in the Council of Nicaea and other councils because they believe they were subordinate. Didn't, didn't believe he was equal. You had tons of heresies to do that because the Trinity makes no logical sense. Now you lied, by the way, and you said there's a verse in John that says that they have the same power, they have the same knowledge, they have the same wisdom, whatever it is. That's Go right. ahead and read that verse for us exactly what it says. Now you said in the Quran, I'm responding to what you said. The Quran, which verse, which uh, verses are uh, corrupted, which verses are not. Whoever agrees with the Quran, we believe that is therefore accepted and true. Whatever disagrees, we reject. Whatever doesn't agree or disagree, we are agnostic about it. That is the Islamic position given by the Prophet and the Quran. Now, where is yeah, that verse? I'll give you, you off there. Yeah, I'll give you 90 seconds to respond. Yeah, this guy's playing games because he knows that nobody interprets any text as if every single phrase or idea that is expressed is in that single text. The Trinity is a doctrine that's derived from all the texts of the scriptures, not from this or that verse. And so he's setting up a false criteria for me to use the exact terminology in any single verse. Jesus says in John 16, 15, that everything that the Father has, has been given to the Son. That means all of his existence, all of his powers, all of his attributes, the Son also shares. I answered his question when he asked, what have you said that are co-equal? Yeah, co-equal in nature, hence the example of the Father and the Son being distinct distinct persons, same in nature, equal in nature. Equal in nature means that equal in the power that proceeds from that nature. So yes, throughout the Gospel of John, every chapter, every book, 
uh, excuse me, every chapter in the book of John includes a reference to the deity of Christ and or a reference to the triad. No, goofus, that doesn't mean the word Trinity is in the book. It means the concept, the teaching of the Trinity is in the book, just like it's throughout the Old Testament, not the words. It doesn't have to have the words. That's your criteria that you uh, made up for me. Now, I asked you a specific question about you going to the text and the prior revelation and what your 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 uh, criteria was, you ignored it, you didn't answer it. I want to know, okay. what is your criteria for knowing when in the Old Testament it's true and when it's false? Is it not the Quran, the very thing in question? 90 seconds for my turn. All right, so clearly he said it is not from a part of the text, it is derived from everything, it is not clear. He's essentially saying it's not clear, which is what we love to hear, is that the doctrine of the Trinity is not clear in the Bible. That's, what, that's why I said I can present many quotes from church fathers, in which they disagree with one another, what they believe the Son was and the Father was. You had all of these councils, you had all of these disagreements, heretical people who were killed, because the, the, the idea of the Trinity is not there. I never asked him for the word, he, he like tried to throw man as if I asked him, where is the word Trinity? I never said that, I said the concept, that's why I started by defining. He didn't answer John 17 3, because he knows it's a thorn uh, in, in his side when I said Jesus said the only true God is the Father. He did not respond to that all he completely ignored it. I responded to his question about the verses, which verses. I said to you, whoever agrees with Islam, generally, the Quran and Hadith, we will accept that this statement is true. So when it says in John and in, in, in Deuteronomy 6, 4, that there's one God, we accept that it's true, no problem. Anything which we disagree, we will reject. Like if something says Jesus died, we could say that it's false, it's corrupted, that is changed. Now, already, already biblical scholars agree that the, the, the Bible has been corrupted. I don't need to do any a lot of research regarding that. Now, when you said God's words doesn't change, uh, change that verse you quoted is talking about Allah's promise and you're quoting it out of uh, out of context. Like I say, I don't change my word. I keep my word. We're talking about promise we're not talking about the revelation of the previous okay. scriptures because the Quran already explains that the revelation of the previous scriptures is, is has been changed. Now you said whatever the Father has been given is being given to me. That's clearly not the case because Jesus did not know and he said he didn't know and he said only the Father knew and what he means by that is not talking about attributes. Perfect, uh, Jade, 90 seconds. Yeah, notice he did not answer the exact challenge I gave him. I asked him what the epistemic criteria was, and he said that uh, the Quran pro uh, backs up the promises of prior revelation when it's with the Quran. So in other words, the Quran proves the Quran by citing the Quran passages in the Old Testament. And yet we read in the Quran that it actually says that you can go to the prior revelation to see that the new revelation is consistent with it. We have revealed to you, O Prophet, the book of truth, confirmation in the previous scriptures, and a supreme authority upon them. So you judge between them what Allah has revealed, and now he's admitting, what was his source? Many scholars say the Bible's corrupted. Oh, really? So many scholars who are atheist unbelieving is what you go to, not to your prophet Muhammad, who said that you can go to the prior Jewish Torah scriptures and Christian scriptures. Those scriptures confirm, supposedly, what's in the Quran. You just said, no, they're all corrupt. So Allah and Muhammad are directing me to go to a corrupt book to prove your book. You don't see how silly that is. And then when I asked you for a standard, you said the standard is the Quran. But the thing in question is the Quran. So you're in a circle. A circle. And it's a fallacy to appeal to authorities to say, we all know the Bible is corrupted. It's all, 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 all. That's a fallacy. I know you guys don't know what fallacies are. They're haram in uh, Islam. Logical fallacy. Right? Logic is haram. So, uh, what's the standard again? Okay, 90 seconds for a Muslim answer. He said, they, uh, I didn't give him a criteria. I clearly did. I said, I agree with the Quran and Hadith. It, it is, we accept it, whoever disagrees or reject it. He said, Quran proves the Quran. Not, nobody here is talking about proving the Quran. Nobody's also talking about uh, the, the Quran proving the Bible. You're just misunderstanding things here. And you're just conflating terms and you're just going around in circle. Nobody's talking about anything proving anything. I already explained to you what the word confirmed there means. You clearly don't understand what you're saying. There's nothing there that says that it's proving it. The verse you did is refuted. You, you mentioned is refuting. I was laughing. How could you read this verse? I think it's supporting you. Verse five, the chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 48, which you were reading, is refuting you. It is literally saying, so judge between them with the Quran with what Allah has revealed to you and do not listen to their desires and the next verse is the same thing and you read yourself for it is a supreme authority over it which means that whatever the Quran dictates is a supreme authority over the Bible that's exactly what I've been saying all this time and I'm, I'm laughing how could you read that verse I think it's supporting you now this is just it's, it's completely ridiculous so now uh, the Quran says it's also corrupted it's mentioned in multiple parts for example the Quran says in chapter 2 verse 75 and mentioned in chapter 2 verse 79 how they write the scripture of their own hand and they claim it is from God you said logic is haram nobody said anything about logic is haram again coming back to 17 uh, chapter John 17 verse uh, uh, 3 where it explicitly says the only true again you're avoiding the question you're running away from the question also we have in John chapter 20 verse 17 it says he has a God he says I'm going back to my God and your God so how can you be God and you have a God he didn't say I have a person I have a father he said father on God so he has a God above him and he believes the only true God is the father and he doesn't have the knowledge of the hour and this is what we mean by him not being equal to the father okay Jay 90 seconds then after this uh, I'll go Jay then we'll answer 90 seconds each and then we can do closing statements uh, uh, finishing with a Muslim lantern because uh, Jay Dyer started so let's go 90 seconds Jay now yeah the argument in both of those passages is not judge the prior revelation on the Quran the argument is that they, that you can go again to uh, 285. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him is from his Lord, as so, so do all the believers, his angels, and his books. The books that are referenced in many other passages as well. This includes 6, 115, 1827. These are the words of Allah previously in the Torah and the Injil. They cannot be corrupted and changed. He believes they're corrupted and changed. Why? Because atheist scholars said so. And 
guess what? The same atheist scholars don't believe in his books and his Quran. They all, all the time reject. So it's a double standard. They always do this. They have a double standard of citing the atheist scholars who reject the Bible, but also reject the Quran. And your Quran does say many times over that I can go and check the previous revelation to be consistent. And then when we find out that it's not consistent, you say, oh, that's because it's corrupted. So I'm supposed to look at a corrupted thing to confirm in a non-corrupted thing. That makes no sense. That's why when I said, what's the epistemic criteria to know the Quran is true? He said the Quran. That's a circle. You explicitly affirmed the very thing I wanted you to affirm, that it is a circle. You said, no one wants to know. No one's asking what's true. I'm asking, how do we know it's true? What do you mean no one's asking this question? I'm asking you this question for the third time. How do we know it's true? And in regard to in regard to John 17, 3, I said monarchical Trinitarianism. Jesus does submit to the Father. That doesn't mean he has a different nature than the Father any more than a son submitting to a father means he has a different nature. Okay, Muslim answer, 90 seconds. Amazing, you saw he jumped from another verse of the Quran because he realized that the reference was wrong. No, they both are right. They both are right. Jumped, they're they're right. right. So right. now he's interrupting because he knows he's, he's being defeated. Right. Right. And, and the other verse that he brought also has nothing to do with what you're saying. It says we believe that <laughs> the, the books. It says the books. So the books that are previous revelations that have been revealed to previous prophets. When we talk about the Which books in that verse, you can, read it in context, yeah, 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 yeah. and you can read it in context, and everyone can read that verse. You can read it in context. You will see it's talking. You can read it, and you can see it's explicitly talking about the promise of Allah. You see how interrupting he is because he knows he's being destroyed. Now he says if if the scholar says the Bible is yes, so we agree. I'm happy we agree that the scholars and I can. I agree that the Bible has been changed, corrupting, there's no original, etc. Now, the, the, these same atheist scholars, and in academia, you will see that they admit, and I've made videos about this before, how the Quran is preserved. You have Dr. Angelica Nuris, she's not Muslim, you have Dr. Tayyar Al Tayyar Al Tayyar, you have many people, like I can mention now, Jared Boy, I can mention many, many names of different people who do believe, who are atheists, or not Muslims, or academic, that the Quran is preserved. There's a whole book written on that, on the manuscripts, for example, Sarah manuscript, and how they show the preservation of the Quran. Now, the Quran never said the Bible is consistent. You're saying we've been talking about the, 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 how to prove the Quran. We never talked about the Quran, we're talking about the Bible is corrupt. That's nothing to do with proving the Quran. Proving the Quran has a, I have a video on my channel, everyone is welcome to watch. It's called the evidence is for the truthfulness of Islam, where we see the prophecies in the Quran and Hadith, we say all of these different things. I don't know what you mean by proving, maybe you're talking about different things. Now, uh, we are talking about the corruption of the Bible. The Bible has been changed, the Bible has been corrupted, it's accepted in academia. I'm happy you threw your whole religion under the bus. Oh, I agree that the Son is subordinate to the Father. I agree, and I, want, and I want all Christians to listen to this. He's through oh, everything under the bus. He said, yes, we agree, it's subordinate to the Father. Excellent, that's what we believe as Muslims. Jesus is submitting to the Father, that's what a Muslim is. Prophet Muhammad was submitting to Allah, and that is what a Muslim is. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Holy Spirit, Mr. Jay, uh, let, let's do uh, five minutes each. Uh, five minutes for Jay, and then five minutes for Muslim. So we'll wrap it up here. Okay, that's yeah, six one fifteen. Again, uh, neither of the passages that he's talking about confirm what he's saying. Six one fifteen. The word of the Lord is perfected in truth and justice. None can change Allah's words. He just admitted that the words of Allah in the previous passages, you heard him say it in the last uh, section there, that no, those verses, those verses of the books, the message, that, that's talking about the previous revelations of the prophets, which he just said is corrupted when his own Quran says the word of Allah right there cannot ever be corrupted. So he's smarter than Allah and the prophet, according to his attachment to unbelieving scholars. What I pointed out was his double standard. And the fact that he's going to appeal to the same scholars, oh, but there's a bunch of other scholars that like the Quran. This is a fallacy of authority. Appealing to scholars is a fallacy of authority if you think that proves a position. You argued that there's a bunch of scholars that debate the early church. So what? That has nothing to do with proving a position. You could bring in scholars to back up a position, but they don't prove anything that's called the fallacy of appeal to authority. So multiple times he's made countless fallacies. He doesn't even know what they are. I point them out and he laughs and talks past it. He appealed to, he said that I made many fallacies talking about this problem of Allah's relationship to his attributes of one and many, which by the way, he believes in an uncreated foot and uncreated shin if he's a Salafi. If he doesn't, then he has to metaphorically interpret those things. Wait a minute. Now he's afforded the ability to metaphorically interpret, interpret these texts, but he doesn't grant that to us when we talk about these passages where Jesus clearly uses rhetoric, clearly uses exaggeration. No, 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 we're not allowed to do that. And by the way, he did try to say that I have to prove in John 1 because there's no mention of three hypostases. Hypostasis is mentioned in Hebrews 1 where it's identified that the Son is the eternal Son of the Father and he's equally divine. He constantly misunderstood what monarchical Trinitarianism is because he doesn't know what it is because it recognizes this distinction between the Father and the Son in terms of monarchia. That doesn't mean that there's a difference in essence. So his whole argumentation this entire time was assuming that distinction between the persons necessarily entails a distinction of S or a diminution of essence, which I said from the very opening statement is not our position. So again, Allah's words are not corruptible. He believes they've been corrupted. Allah is one, but you heard him use analogies to the blackness of his shirt to help me, but his own Quran says that Allah is nothing like things in creation. I'm pretty sure your shirt is a creature. I'm pretty sure black is a part or an attribute of a shirt. So your own analogies refute you. And that's why I'm constantly calling you out on a double standard. I'm not saying you don't answer by stating your position, but like many people who are no good at debate, you think answering your position is refuting an argument calling out a contradiction. I'm arguing your position contradicts. I'm not asking you to restate the position. I'm saying your position contradicts in many ways. These things contradict. The word of Allah cannot be corrupted or changed. You just said the prior revelations were corrupted and changed. Okay, I'll give a final statement to, to Muslim Lantern. Uh, he went around three minutes. If you can keep it uh, three to four, I think it'd be fair.
All good, no problem. All right, so he mentioned uh, chapter 6 of the Quran. And as I said already, there's two only two pieces in the Quran talks about the words of Allah. Chapter 6 and another, uh, chapter, Surah Al-Kaf, chapter 18 of the Quran. One explicitly talks about the Quran, mentions the ayah, the verses of Allah, specifically referring to the Quran. And the other one, which he quoted in, in, in 6, it talks, about, it talks about the judgment and the promise of Allah. How do you know? Read the verse before. Allah says in the Quran, Is there any judge that I'll take other than Allah? It's talking about the judgment of Allah. And then it says that that uh, and the, the promise of your Lord or the word of judgment of your Lord has been fulfilled. What is that talking about? I'm talking about verses being I thought, oh, definitely not talking about the Torah and Jesus. It says, because book, already it says, book, because already it says, book, you're lying. Don't it says, book, don't cry, don't cry, you're losing. It says, book, you're lying. Don't cry, it says, book, I know you're crying. What is 114? You should mute him, by the way. He's everything. I'm not muted for my audience. You should, I didn't let you speak. I didn't interrupt you. You should be muted. It says, book, it says, book, I don't want to see it. I said, you're Good. Can you please mute him because he's, he's going to try and... He's okay. Yeah, he's all right, okay, so again, we'll say this very, very, very simply. Uh, the verse of the Quran, I, I mentioned it, I mentioned the verse, and open in exegesis, open the exegesis of the scholars. Nobody has said in Islamic history that this is referring to the previous scriptures. And I give evidences why this is not referring to the previous scriptures, that they are corrupt, and I give evidences. He gave an evidence by himself, misquoting the verse in chapter 5. Also, I give chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 75, and verse 79, which was clearly this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Now he said, Oh, we do metaphors. When did I do a metaphor? Oh, if you're this, if you're that, that. You don't even know who I am. That's, that's the problem. You come to argue with me. Well, you don't say what you are. Quran, you don't say what you are. So I, only I'm state, I'm a, I only state I'm a Muslim. I don't do other than that. Well, that's that deceptive. You're not. You're not. You can't do the They do this as a lie. Like he so knows this. That's, that's a deception. It is not like it's a deception. He doesn't understand this. He doesn't understand yeah. this. this is he's just, freaking out because he call, got bought. What we call UK waffle in the UK. Just someone waffles a few words. He thinks he's making big words so he can confuse the audience. He all never answered any objection. And, and, and he's not allowed to. You have to have a school. There's no such thing as no no school or aqida. So he's actually he's actually acting like he doesn't have an aqida. So there's no contradiction. So I was refuting him. He came to the black and white shirt and all. I already told him this analogy to do with attributes not to do with Allah so not, I'm not trying to say the shirt is Allah it's an and analogy to attribute that, not to Allah <laughs> then the analogy doesn't do anything this guy's a joke say, look Jay left defending this Jesus guy's a joke he's supported it. he started to use some waffling oh the essence is not this, oh, this is that. it doesn't matter what we can see the whole chat's laughing at you because before all of this philosophy had been introduced and brought oh, now it's into philosophy. the picture is that clearly Jesus was supported and that's why we have the earliest groups like the Ibu Nights and Nazarene he's not even addressing they were heretical did not believe the Trinitarian beliefs we had the church fathers and I said I can easily give more quotes where they didn't agree on the concept that Jay has in his mind so Simply, Jay has put Jesus under the bus from a position that he believes in the Trinity, and he clearly admitted he doesn't know the hour. It is not the same. I think he's contradicting himself. He says he doesn't mm. know the hour, but at the same time, they're not equally necessary, but at the same time, they're the same. But he just keeps contradicting himself and going in the same circle. So is it metaphorical or he doesn't really know the hour and they're supporting it to one another? He doesn't know his own positions. And with that, I answered he everything that he did. Nobody's buying this except the lowest Jesus, the Lord of Jesus, who he said he's coming back to. He says, I'm going back to my God. We asked you to worship that Lord that Jesus came to, and he said he's going to worship, he's going to go back to. That is the Lord that we call you to worship, the Lord of Jesus, Moses, Noah, Prophet Muhammad, and peace be upon all of the prophets and messengers. And I conclude here with this cooking, and because it's burning in the kitchen now. All right. Okay, wait, before, before, uh, um, before you know, hold on, uh, Jay, I want to get, because he, we, um, there was interruptions, um, I did say that it was going to be the closing statements, but because it seems like there's more, do you think we could do uh, one more back and forth, two minutes each, is that okay with both parties? Uh, no, I think that's, it's good to edit here, I don't want to go more. Oh, more he doesn't want to go anymore, not, right? It's always, he, knows I'm he, he keeps him. repeating the same thing every No, time. I have another, I, 378 right, says the book is not corrupt. No, no, he 378 he says the book is, so he doesn't want any more because he knows he got bodied. We already had a debate, so now you're losing and crying. Yeah, I, know, I do appreciate it. For bringing up more of your problems, you. I'm not crying. Dude, the, you're the one snickering with that right, condescending wanna, giggle because you, you got good. Or, uh, it's all rhetoric. Uh, Jay, it, it was nice to meet you, and I appreciate you coming on here. This was much more civil than the, the earlier yep. debate. I, I hope to do this again. I think this, this was um, yeah, fast-paced, and it was horrible. Any con.